Hello, I'm making this video to talk about why civil commitment and psychiatric holds should be outlawed. I'll define those first. So civil, well, psychiatric holds first off is when a authorized person, usually a social worker or physician, puts somebody involuntarily, generally in a hospital for up to between maybe 72 and 96 hours, depending on the circumstances. It's a very short term thing. Um, and it's mostly for, you know, assessment or stabilization, uh, is, you know, in the psychiatric industry. Uh, but it is involuntary when it happens because if somebody is there voluntarily, they usually won't be put on a hold. It's when somebody wants to leave and a doctor or social, social worker wants to stop them. Then civil commitment is when it happens on a longer term basis, usually for, uh, you know, about maybe six months, up, you know, up to six months, and it varies from state to state, and often, of course, it could be extended. And these things happen, they're used when somebody is deemed to be a danger to their own self or others. That is, they have a plans, mean, and intention of hurting, hurting their own self or others, so like killing themselves or killing someone else. And I'm saying this should be outlawed. So why am I saying this should be outlawed? Well, let's look for uh, danger to others first with civil commitment. If somebody has broken a law, well, they should be dealt with in the criminal justice system. If somebody has not broken a law, then they should be free to go. So really, um, yeah, that's the basic reasoning why civil commitment should not be legal to use or in psychiatric holds should not be legal to use on somebody in danger to their, you know, someone else. You know, there's crimes like conspiracy um, and harassment and so on and so forth. And if somebody is planning to hurt someone else, those criminal laws should be used. Not, you know, it's basically having the insanity defense sort of, and that's a whole other story, but that shouldn't be legal either. It should be banned. Uh, in danger to self, you know, at least for adults, suicide should be considered a civil right. You know, just like we have birth control, deciding when we want to give birth as far as using birth control methods like condoms or pills uh, or um, visectomies, um, tubal ligation, so on and so forth are legal. Death control, being able to decide when one dies, for adults at least, should be a personal choice. It should be respected as a personal choice. It's not necessarily a good choice or a moral choice, but it should be respected as a choice. And certainly we should use persuasion to try and help persuade people to create a life worth living for their own self. But suicide is a moral choice, not a medical disease. And again, I think it would be great if we don't have any suicides on Earth. I think, it would be, I think it would be great if all humans want to live, you know, as long as possible. But I don't think we should use force or, or coercion to try and force and coerce anyone into living longer than they want to. I definitely think we should use persuasion, use persuasion to try and persuade people to create lives worth living for their own self, but we should not use force and coercion. So, yeah, we sh and if I'm fine with voluntary psychiatry, that's fine, but involuntary psychiatry is, I think, morally and ethically wrong. I think it's a human rights abuse. Um, I support the separation of psychiatry and state. Psychiatry is not real medicine in the sense of real medicine being the ability to objectively diagnose histopathological and pathophysiological diseases. And psychiatry is not that. They interview people to diagnose using the DSM, the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders. And it's not real medicine in the sense of it's not treating anything physically wrong, not in the objective sense where we can measure something. You know, you can't. So, uh, yeah, and I'm sure there's other reasons why civil commitment and psychiatric holds should be outlawed. Um, you know, for, oh, for one thing, for suicide, with suicide, you know, beliefs about afterlife seem to fall under, you know, the spiritual and theological. 
So what if somebody decides for their own self that, you know, spiritually, dying is better than living? I'm not saying it is, but, you know, if somebody takes that position and wants to hurt themselves because of that, uh, you know, theological and philosophical position, we shouldn't forcibly stop them. You know, you're implicitly imposing theological and spiritual beliefs that living on earth is better than whatever happens after on people by locking them up and stopping them. That's wrong. So, uh, yeah, read the books that Thomas Saws wrote. This, this is probably, what, two or three minutes, uh, three or four minutes that I've been talking. This is by no means comprehensive. Um, read the books that psychiatrist Thomas Saws wrote. He wrote, he died in 2012. Um, some of the ones I recommend are Psychiatry, the Science of Lies, Insanity, The Idea and Its Consequences, The Myth of Mental Illness, uh, Fatal Freedom, The Ethics and Politics of Suicide, I think that's the title. Also, Suicide Prohibition, The Shame of Medicine. I recommend all those. So, I'll be very happy when we outlaw civil commitment and uh, psychiatric holds and the insanity defense as well. And let me reiterate that I hope no one harms themselves or others. I hope that, uh, you know, hurting someone else only happens in cases of authentic and legitimate self-defense and even then, I hope nobody has to resort to self-defense, but, um, you know, there are legal circumstances where someone can hurt someone else in self-defense, you know, and it has to be authentic self-defense. Um, but yeah, I hope no one has to hurt, you know, <laughs> I hope no one hurts themselves or anyone else. I hope we can get to that point as a species, um, as a society of humans on Earth, I hope we can get to that point. I just don't think we should use psychiatric justifications to deprive innocents of liberty, um, innocent people of liberty, or to excuse the guilty of crimes through the insanity defense, but that's a whole other story. So, anyway, thanks for watching. Please subscribe, watch my other videos, visit my websites, um, and have a wonderful morning, evening, afternoon, or night, whenever and wherever you may be.